Come on, people. All right, we're struggling through this, this last topic about the Van Allen belts, the magnetic field, gravity. I introduced the uh, fourth force, as Tesla did, just backing up his stuff. And um, we're talking about uh, centric grab buggle force. Later on in this video, we're going to get into that force and how it works and how it maintains the uh, Van Allen boats uh, belt. So we got us a, a, a video on the moon creates the Van Allen belts around the earth. Planets with moons have Van Allen belts versus planet without moons that have no Van Allen belts. So all right, it's pretty simple. There's a lot of physical uh, evidence out in the universe and uh, even closer to home in our solar system. Like I said, the other videos here, we got a, a nice little description of what's going on here. We have magnetic fields, uh, mainstream's idea of what's going on that's created by the Earth. Correlation with the sun. Now, the sun's about as big as my thumbnail. You know, this, this um, uh, you know, the uh, depth perception here is all wrong, but we're going to just play with it anyways. You know, um, and uh, again, no mention of the moon. When it comes to a Van Allen belt, the magnetic field, or any other thing, we've got, hey, the moon has nothing to do with any kind of astrophysics whatsoever ever, as, as far as the mainstream is concerned. All right, here's your typical Van Allen belts. Right here, these are the Van Allen belts. And uh, like I said, the other video, the mainstream has, the, um, has us believe in the Earth. Uh, magnetic field, which is created by the sun, by the way. It's charged particles streaming in from the sun at light speed, or pretty close to it, uh, is, is uh, creating the magnetic field, and the sun is, and, and uh, it's also protecting us against the same elements of the sun that is creating the magnetic field. So, you got to step back and say, wait a minute now. It's creating the magnetic field and it's also protecting us from its particles. You, you can't have both. You gotta, you gotta make a choice, people. You know, make a choice. You gotta have just one or the other. You can't have it doing both. It just doesn't make any sense, you know. All right, here's the Shaughnessy theory here on the Van Allen belts. These are the Van Allen belts. I'm gonna get into the reason why the moon creates the Van Allen belt because the moon is the one that's moving the most subatomic particles. It's flexing the gravitational field every day. You can see it with the uh, high tide and low tides. And, um, you know, we can, you know, make a little sense of this. Just just hang in there with me so we get through these uh, images. So these are the magnetic, uh, the uh, Van Allen belts. And this is the, the uh, flows you know, the moon's out here somewhere, a quarter of a million mile away. Actually, it's way out here because the Van Allen belt's the largest uh, distance that has been recorded from the Earth. is like 65,000 miles off the surface of the Earth. And uh, generally, it's only um, 25,000 miles. But, uh, okay, and then I think the smallest one is like 1,000 to 8,000 miles uh, off the surface of the Earth. All right, so... Here's the flux lines of the subatomic flow that are coming out of the latitudes and flowing back in and, uh, you know, the big lines and everything. It's not, it's, um, I'm not denying there's a magnetic field on the planet. There is. You can go look at a compass. You can see it points north. So there is a magnetic field. But the Earth's magnetic field is weak, and we'll show you why it's weak. It's too weak to be going out 65,000 miles into space, okay? You got the magnetic flux lines, um, you know, can't be going out that far. If, if the magnetic flux lines from the Earth's magnetic field was going out 65,000 miles, okay, I just make a point here, you wouldn't be able to pick up a, a hammer off the ground, you know? Every ounce of iron or anything that was magnetic on the surface over the, over the, over the course of the, uh, you know, the uh, Earth's existence would have been sucked down to the core by this giant magnetic field, okay? And magnetic fields dissipate with heat, okay? So the core of the Earth is like as hot as the sun, okay? So forget, forget the magnetic field there. If there's any magnetism, it's on the surface of the planet, and it's caused by the, uh, you know, by iron, and, uh, but it's up above the, uh, you know, it's not coming out of the core like mainstream science would have you believe, okay? 
All right, here's the inner belts right here. These two little uh, bands right here, belts if you will. And then the, uh, if you go to belts, you have your satellites up here. And uh, the other belts, uh, they're saying 12,000, 25,000. Like I said, uh, there's been uh, reports that it's gone out 65,000 miles. They're very, very elusive as far as, um, you know, getting measurements. But we know they're out there. Mr. Van Allen himself sent a rocket up and measured them back in the 50s. Okay, this is the uh, magnetic field that we have on planet Earth. You get the, you know, it's, as you know, it's all it's drifting all the time. The uh, uh, magnetic uh, center is drifting up on the North Pole, and uh, that's probably because of the Moon's metonic cycle. There's a six, uh, 1260 year Soro cycle, and I'm sure if if it was you know tracked that long, it would probably follow that. Follow that. Again, everything's related to the Moon. <clears throat> And um, here is the uh, mainstream science that they want us to uh, believe is going on. Somehow, uh, we have a magnetic field created by this um, by the Earth, and these these are the uh, you know this is the North Pole that's coming in. South Pole is going out and flowing back into the North Pole. It, it all sounds wonderful, you know, but it, it's this there's, there's some uh, common sense missing from the picture. There's some common physics that. Uh, that uh, you know that that just aren't being followed here. Right? You, you know, it's, we're, we're defying the laws of physics with this explanation. Again, they don't put the moon in there. They don't put the moon any in, in any of this. The moon is not in any existence, any conversation, any topic when it comes to the magnetic fields on the planet. And uh, the moon's gravity does would flex a magnetic field if there was a magnetic field. The, the uh, you know, it would it would flex the, uh, the 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 whole magnetic field, and it does. You know, the moon is the end all be all. Um, you know, monster, gravity monster out there, right next to the Earth. All right, here's the Earth spinning around. Here's the moon. Uh, you got a good gap; it's about a quarter of a million miles away. You know, so close to that, a little bit below a quarter million miles, and, and uh, you know, you just have that uh, gravitational flux. Uh, when the Earth is spinning, so too is its gravitational field is spinning, but the moon deflects, it stretches out the gravitational field and allows, you know, the tides, creates the tidal forces, and it also creates the Van Allen belts because it's, it's uh, pulling and releasing and tugging the, um, you know, the uh, subatomic world, right? I mean, you got a flow connection that's as big as day out there, you know, or night for that instance. You know, go out there tonight, we've got a half a moon tonight, actually. 27th of December? Yeah, so, uh, anyways, um, there you go. So that's that's what's going on. We've got some good gifts here. It's kind of a repeat of the uh, video I had earlier on the magnetic fields and the flux lines, so... Um, and again, it was you know I'm putting I'm putting the moon as being the end all be all creator of this particular uh, situation. Now you notice the tidal buds, the tidal, the tidal uh, bulge. You have a high tide on the moon side, and you have a high tide on the uh, moonless side, and that's created because the moon does flex the gravitational field of the planet. Now this this gravitational field, as you can see, it is flowing around with the planet. It is. Uh, a geosynchronous uh, gravitational field, unbeknownst to the mainstream. Again, um, I gotta keep saying that because I don't want you to think that this stuff is something that you can pick up a textbook and uh, read about. Because it's not. It's not. Not yet, anyways. But the uh, magnetic, the gravitational field spins with the Earth, okay, and it's it's flexed by the Moon. So this is what creates, this, this interaction creates the Van Allen belts because of the, uh, you know, the subatomic connection between gravity, uh, electrons, I mean, the gravi gravitons and electrons, they, they uh, is, is uh, and, and this, this, this actually has been observed by the uh, astrophysics, theoretical physics community is, uh, they, they believe that the electrons and gravitons bond at the North Pole and then repel each other as they flow into the South Pole, but then they um, they uh, exit through the latitudes and flow back into the pole. So instead of everything coming in from the North 
you know, the, the flow is from both poles inward. Um, this is just a, just a magnetic, uh, you know, explanation of what's going on in our world with motors and generators. That's how everything's uh, turned, rotated, generated. And here we go. Uh, this, this is the, uh, this is uh, planet Jupiter, 76 moons on it. Uh, I just read a paper published two weeks ago um, in some of the finest, uh, you know, scientific journals on the planet. And not mentioned, not, not one mention of 76 moons on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, so any interaction with the moon has with the magnetic field. They theorize that, though these people theorize that the, uh, the actual magnetic field is created by a solid hydrogen uh, core, okay? And somehow that magically creates a magnetic field that protects uh, the, the planet Jupiter. And, you know, Saturn, same thing with, uh, with the uh, magnetic fields. But, it's, you know, it's not the magnetic field that creates the Van Allen belts off of these other planets. It's the actual manipulation of the gravitons, the electrons caused by the moons. All right, all these moons are, are creating and... Um, you know, the, creating a, a belt that, that does trap the um, radiation, the radioactive particles streaming in from the sun. Not the magnetic fields, okay? Again, these, uh, this, this is, uh, you know, just, it's just common sense here. You, you can't, you cannot put out any theory, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't have a theory, if you have a theory on a magnetic field or any kind of geophysics or, or uh, you know, theoretical physics concerning a magnetic field on the planets that have moons, and you don't uh, acknowledge the moons and their movements, it's it's uh, it's a hollow theory. It's not gonna it's not gonna hold water. You know, it's not gonna it's not going to. Uh, I mean, it might get published. It might you know get people thinking, but um, you know. Denying the existence of the moons is not the way to go, okay, people? It's just not the way. It's not, it's not good science, you know? You can't just, like, um, ignore the, uh, you know, the 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room here, you know, or the 2,000 or 10,000-pound elephant or whatever you want, uh, what, however heavy the uh, elephant is in the room. Okay, this is the flux lines, okay? And uh, this is, you know, Earth, this is flux lines. So it's giving you some kind of a uh, understanding of, you know, that the... the uh, geometry of the Van Allen belt and, and it's it's being flexed by the moon the moon is flexing it the moon is causing it and these particles are streaming in from the latitudes and coming back into the to the poles okay now that's a uh, the fourth force that I call center grab Vugo force and basically it is a force that that I wrote is my fourth law of gravity. I copyright wrote that, and um, I've actually entered an experiment into a uh, contest that's uh, worth a million euros, and where I'm negotiating the terms of the experiment that's going to prove gravity manipulation. And um, it's it's so uh, revolution revolutionary um, that uh, Germans. German customs actually seized a letter in the mail for almost uh, 30 days before it made it to its to its destination. So obviously somebody thinks it's um, somewhat important, and um, the government the the gubber government has has seen fit to hold on to my documents. So anyways, finally made it after I hemmed and hawed um, and. You know, they said it was our side, uh, you know, the post office said it was their side, you know, whatever. You know, it was like 30 days to get uh, first class mail to Germany and uh, I sent it on the 25th of October and it was seized on the 31st in um, Hamburg, Germany. Was it Hamburg? No, it was uh, Berlin, I think. And it didn't get there until, that was like the 20. 22nd of uh, November. Anyways, no big deal. You know, this stuff's out there. You know, they're, they're seizing papers that I've already uh, I've already copyrighted, but that's off topic. I just want to let you know that, 
you know, this ain't some airy fairy, some guy just uh, smoking a fatty coming up with this stuff. This stuff is real. It's got it's got physics. It's got meat and potatoes. It's got observable evidence, people. All right, is this guy here? Yours truly pointing at the moon over the uh, pyramids, which, by the way, run off of the moon's gravitational field. And instead of pyramids, they're uh, called gravitational lenses. Here's topographical uh, view of the planet. There's the alignments between pyramids and volcanoes. It's uh, another another video. Check out my uh, other videos. Uh, pyramid gravity force videos if you want to get into that uh, science. And uh, this is the signature in the ice age of planet Earth that has a a gravitational gear signature. Just like I said, the gravitational field is spinning with the Earth, but the moon can is uh, you know deflecting it and stretching it out because of its mass. But nevertheless, the whole gravitational field, which is space-time, is geo-synchronized, geo-locked with the planet. That's why you can't fly from, you can fly, fly from London to Boston in six hours. I don't know, Boston to London for six hours. And going back, you, you should cut the time because you're going towards the, the uh, rotation of the planet. You should be able to like, uh, get, get back to Boston from London in, say, two and a half hours. Because of the rotational speed of the Earth, you're going against it. You don't spin it underneath you, but that's not the case because the gravitational field is spinning with the Earth. So you're not going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, without a, without a time machine, you're not going to crack open that space-time continuum. Is you know, not to steal something from uh, Back to the Future there, but uh, you're not going to you're not going to crack that egg. Uh, doing what you're doing. However, there are there are ways that I that I have uh, surmised that you can take a faster plane trip and and utilize the rotational speed of the planet under you. But um, you know that's for another video. That's if the men in black don't take me out first, get me in one of them car accidents. Anyways, uh, Earth's three-phase gravity land water signature interacting with the moon's planetary gears. This is in the interglacial period we're in right now. Three-phase, you know, land, water, okay? Water is a uh, neutral gravitational signature. That's why, you know, there's, there's not a hell of a lot of subatomic particles coming out. Uh, magnetism and things of that nature. And uh, the land, obviously, there's a lot more uh, uh, subatomic uh, um uh, food, if you will, in the in, in the uh, in the in the uh, elements, uh, you know, a combination of subatomic particles that will make up the Van Allen belts and uh, does do make up this signature that actually locks in with the moon quite nicely, as the video as the picture shows. But it's it's kind of off topic on the Van Allen belts, but just giving you an idea of what's actually happening. Well, you know, our mountains deflect the space-time going out past Mars, okay? It's, you know, we're, we're you know, it's spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, 1,100 miles an hour, and we are creating a signature, un again, unbeknownst to mainstream physics. So, you guys start hearing this stuff being published, you can let me know about it, because this stuff is copyrighted, and there will be, there will be some letters sent out. All right, here's the Earth without a moon. Okay, you got the moon, it kind of pops and disappears. This is how erratic the planet would be. You know, we'd be flipping and flopping head over heels. You know, it'd be an ice age one minute, you'd be baking, baking the next, you know, you know, on fire the next. And um, again, this is, this is the, uh, you know, this is, this is how important the moon. So you got these people that are demonizing the moon and it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, if the moon wasn't here, there wouldn't be any intelligent life on the planet. Not that there is, but you know, there's some, some, uh, there could be, you know, uh, at some time. But anyway, sometime in the future, there could be intelligent life. Uh, is, is the heat. This, this, this picture alone would cancel out any magnetic field. Once you have heat, you don't have a magnetic field, okay? And this is kind of gives you a, a gravitational, uh, you know, a subatomic flow of what's going on with the moon, the gravity, and everything that moves the subatomic particles in the planet. And uh, again, we have, uh, you know, uh, you know, S, P, and S waves to show the picture inside. Um, we'll wrap it up real quick. There's a couple of my books. You guys have seen it before. Uh, share this stuff. Pass it along. Put it out there. Don't be afraid. Get, get involved, man. So your kids' kids don't have to plow through this stuff. 
you know, 60 or 120 years from now.